What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create this onion dome in Revit. Uh, now I've seen th these images of these uh, onion, onion style domes. I, I know it sounds silly but I don't know how else to explain the shape. It has these segments. It looks really cool and it's kind of twisted uh, which just adds a bit more complexity to it. Uh, and I thought it was really cool and I thought well why not model that in Revit. Now it was really difficult at first uh, but more that I explored it I've realized that it's, uh, it's fairly straightforward. It is a little bit of work but in the end it's not something that's that complicated or that difficult. So today I'm just going to be showing you how to model something like this. We're going to be using the massing uh, in environment in Revit to complete this uh, and if you want to learn more about massing in Revit so you will have kind of infinite abilities when it comes to uh, modeling uh, pretty much anything in Revit, uh, well I have a whole dedicated course to that uh, and you can find that in the description just below this video first link takes you to my website there I have that course as well as many other courses over a hundred hours of Revit courses where I kind of take the extra time to explore or complex Revit topics in depth. Uh, also, please make sure to subscribe and like and share this video. It helps me out a lot, it helps promote the video to other people that might want to see it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here we are inside of Revit. Uh, so let's get started immediately by going here to models and then let's go to new. Uh, now you can see I'm starting this as a new model. You can obviously start it as a massing family and then load that into your model. I just prefer going straight to the project and then uh, using the in place mass option. So those are just the kind of the two approaches. Uh, now here for the template file, I am just going to be using uh, my architecture design template. This is my personal template. You can find uh, both of my templates on my website balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the third link in the description just below the video. Anyways, let's just click OK and then let's let Revit start right up. Okay, so once we're here, uh, what I'm going to do is just move down here to the project browser, go to elevations and then open up the south elevation because we have to add some uh, levels and also I want to add an image which I want to use as reference. Uh, so here I found this on Google and I'm just dragging this image over and I'm gonna place it like that. Uh, I'm going to include this image on my Patreon page so if you download the project files you have the image as well so you can kind of attempt to do this yourself or you can just google for these onion shaped domes and you can find this as well like that. Uh, okay so let's resize this a little bit might be a bit too tall for our kind of uh, project and then let's just fit it here between the levels. Uh, now what I'm going to do is uh, just select it and use the arrow keys to move it down and then once I move kind of the base of it uh, down at level one, I'm just going to select the image again, uh, go here to the modify panel and then go to the scale tool. RE is the shortcut. So you just want to use the graphical scale, click here on the bottom, somewhere in the middle, just try to kind of get it in the middle. And then you want to go here to the top where kind of the uh, the the onion uh, parts, I don't know how you call these onion segments, uh, where they stop. So you just want to go from there and extend that to the top of the level, just like so. And there we go. I'm happy with the kind of with the proportions or with the size of this image. Okay, now we have to make some uh, marks uh, where we want to have kind of uh, important parts of this uh, whole uh, of this whole construction. So what I want to do is I want to mark out a few profiles along the way. So let me show you. I'm just going to go here to the work plane uh, segment or the work plane panel and then go to the reference plane tool. RP is the shortcut. So I want to run one horizontal reference plane through the widest part of this uh, dome. Then I want to find the part where this kind of wraps around and starts going up which is somewhere over here and then I want to add an additional reference plane just like so. I'm just going to select it and then extend it a little bit. There we go. Uh, and for the top one and for the bottom one we already have levels so we don't have to add any reference planes. This one might want to go a little bit lower. There we go. Okay. Uh, so with this done or hmm, okay let's leave it like that. 
Okay, so once we have these in place, uh, it makes sense to name them. So I'm just going to name this one number one, and then this one number two. It might be a little bit odd with these being level one and level two, but these are levels and these are just reference planes. Okay, we want to add just a few more reference planes uh, to kind of vertically mark the beginning here, the widest part, the part here, and then the kind of the smallest part. Uh, so again, you want to go to the reference plane tool. Uh, you want to start here. Perhaps the beginning is somewhere over here, just like that. So just place a vertical plane like that. Then here's the widest part. So let's go from there up. Uh, extend this a little, a little bit below, just like so. And then we can select this, go to the copy tool. And then I'm just going to copy it from here to here. So basically where the kind of this reference plane intersects with the horizontal one. Uh, and then finally, you want to add just one more. So let's go here to reference plane. And that's basically here at the at the top. Uh, now, once we have all of these that mark out uh, the, the positions of our profiles, which we're going to be creating to model this, uh, I'm just going to add a center one. So again, reference plane, find the center, I like to go here to this point. And then we can go down to here, extend it a little bit up here. There we go. Okay, so with all of these in place, uh, you want to name them and it's going to be a little bit odd because you don't start with this one. You want to start with this one because it's going to go from here to here and then to here. So this is essentially one, two, three, and then this one is the fourth. Uh, now, obviously, we have used up one and two. So let's go with A for this one. So this is going to be A. This one is going to be B. Uh, then it's this one, this one is C, and then finally this one is, yeah, you guessed it, D. Okay, so it might have looked a little bit odd and a little bit troublesome to create all of this, but once we have all of this measured out, now we can finally create our shape and it gets easy from here. Uh, so to create the shape, uh, you want to go into level one, add just one more horizontal plane that we need here, so reference plane, and then just go like this. Uh, we can name that, let's call this one the center. Okay, and now finally to create the dome, we have to go to the massing environment. So you just go here to massing and sight. You go to show mass to turn the mass visibility on. And then finally you go to in place mass uh, in order to create that mask. Now here I'm just going to be calling it a dome, hit enter for okay, and now let's get started. So uh, you can work either in level one or what I prefer to do is just go to the site plan because we're kind of above everything. Uh, and then here you want to go with a circle, start from the center point, which is this, it's the kind of the far furthest one on the right. And then you want to go to the uh, reference plane A. So here it intersects with uh, reference plane A, which is this one here. And uh, now once we have this circle created, uh, you wanna go here to the line tool, go straight here, just like that. And then you wanna go from the center down at a 20 degree angle. Uh, now I just went with a 20 degree angle. You can use a different angle if you want. Uh, now if you can sell, you just wanna select one segment, you, you hover over that segment, you hit the tab key once, so you can then select it. So oops, uh, this should be at 20 degrees. Then obviously I want to extend it up to the end of the circle. And there we go. And finally, to complete the kind of the onion shape, you want to go to the uh, start end radius arc, go from here up to here, and then just create something that looks like that. Hit the escape key a couple of times, and there we go. Uh, it might look a little bit odd, but this is the approach. Okay, so the next step is to select all of this, go to uh, copy, and then move it off to the side. Now, once this is moved to the side, you can go here to the host option, and then you can move this. So I can just move this, so go here to reference plane number one. So it basically moved it one level above that. And then also I wanna scale it down. So I just wanna go here to the scale tool and then, uh, or sorry, scale it up. So I want to make it bigger because it has to fit kind of this reference plane here. And then also we want to rotate it a little bit because if you remember that onion kind of shape rotates around, creates a little spiral. So for that rotation, you want to go here to the rotate tool. RO is the shortcut. 
Uh, make sure to place it in the center because it's always going to be just a little bit offset. And then for the angle, you just type in 20 and it's going to rotate that like this. You go back to the move tool, you select the center, you place it here in this center and it's going to look like this. Now I've while well, I was surprisingly precise, uh, if you're off a little bit, again, just go to the scale tool, go to the center, go to the edge of the this, and then just find the intersection with the reference plane, just like that, and then it looks like this. Now you wanna go again to the copy tool, and then just copy the whole thing off to the side. Uh, and now I suggest going to the 3D view and just making sure that you're correct when it comes to space. So as you can see, uh, the smaller one is in the bottom and then the largest one is here. Now the next one is going to be uh, smaller. So let's select all of this. Uh, go to the reference plane uh, or the host and move it to reference plane number two. So now as you can see, it's a little bit higher above that. Uh, also, let's go back to the site plan. Uh, let's make it smaller. Now it should fit here. It should go up to this reference plane. Uh, so because of that, uh, we have to scale it down. So let's go to scale, uh, go to center here, scale it down like that. And also you wanna add that 20 degree rotation. So let's go to place, place it in the center and then go down by 20 degrees. Perfect. Okay, go back to the move tool, uh, go back to the center, place it here in the center. Uh, and now uh, let's go to the scale tool. R E is the shortcut. Click here in the center, click here, and then scale it up to this point, just like that. Uh, so we're almost done. We just need one more. Uh, so again, it's the same process. You go to copy, you move it off to the side, uh, you scale it down a little bit. So, well, actually we want to scale it quite a bit. You rotate that. Uh, so place center of rotation, place it in the center. Again, another 20 degrees. And then you just put it back. So you just go here, put it back. And then obviously we have to rescale that to put it in the correct position. So scale from here to here to here. And then I forgot to change the host. So let's go here to the host. And instead of reference plane two, we should go to level two. And now if I go to the 3D view, it looks like this. So now it almost has that dome shape. Now to finalize the shape, what you want to do is hold the control key. That means that you're adding to the selection. And then you want to select this bottom part, rotate a little bit, hold the control key, select this, go up, select this, finally zoom in and select this. So you have all four of these selected. And with that done, you go here to create form, you click on create form and it creates that onion kind of curved onion shape. Now, obviously with greater rotation, you can get greater spiral. With less rotation, you get less spiral. Uh, with the, a larger angle here in the beginning, you get bigger chunks, bigger, uh, <laughs> bigger onion uh, components or segments. And with a smaller angle, you get smaller ones. I just like this current look, so I'm just going to go with that. Uh, then you wanna select the whole thing and we can do that in the site plan. So you hover over the edge here and then you hit the tab key once. So the whole thing will highlight like this and it will say form element. Then you click and unfortunately we cannot use an array or in this case a repeater, uh, but what we can do is go to copy, CO is the shortcut or sorry, not copy, rotate. Uh, then you want to go place center of rotation, place it here in the center. Uh, then you want to make sure to check copy like so, and then you just click, go like this, and then add a 20 degree angle. Then you want to repeat that. Now I'm just going to repeat that same thing uh, four times or three times until I have four segments. So now we have three, rotate, copy, place, center, and 20. Okay, so now we have four. Uh, now let's hover over this one, hit the tab key once to s highlight the whole thing, hold the control key, add to selection, go to this one. Hit the tab key once, hold the control key, add to selection. Hover over it again, hit the tab key once, hold the control key, and then select. Okay, now we have four segments selected. So again, you go to rotate, you go to copy, you go to place, and the angle for four of them, when you want to well, multiply it, you want to go that, that, that makes it 80, four times 20 degrees. So you just go like this and then you type in 80 degrees and it does this. 
So you repeat that again. Copy, place there again, 80. And I think we just have one more. Okay. And uh, now here we just have to add a couple of segments. So let's select this one. So highlight it, tab key once, click, highlight, tab key, hold the control key, click. So it's a little bit uh, difficult at first, but you'll get the hang of it. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, and finally, let's go here to rotate. Uh, let's go to copy, place. Uh, now we have two segments. So that's 20 times two makes it 40 and we finish our shape. So now if I go to the 3D view, that looks like this and I'm really excited. I think this looks really, really cool. Uh, obviously you can finish uh, the top part here. So if you go to the south elevation or something like that, see uh, what you can do is just go here to reference lines. Uh, now you wanna pick a plane and you can pick it by name and then go with the center one, click okay. Uh, you place one reference plane vertically like this and make sure here it says draw on a work plane. Yeah. So make sure you make one. Okay, just line. Okay. Uh, then you want to go back to model uh, and then you want to go with, I don't know, use whatever you want. So I'm just going to start off with a simple line that goes here from the top. You go down to here. You go out to here, then we can switch to, I don't know, like arc, make a little arc. Then you want to switch to the regular line again, go up to here. Then this looks like an arc again, just a small arc like that. Then again, we have an arc up to there, I don't know, like that. And then finally we can go up to here with another arc. Perfect. Hit the escape key a couple of times. Uh, then you want to go to the 3D view. Uh, you see what you have. You, so you have uh, this shape and then you hold the control key to select the reference plane. So you're basically going to be rotating this shape uh, around the reference plane. So when I click create form, it's going to create this form. So see, we've created a revolve inside of the massing environment. Uh, and finally, to finish this, it makes sense to add some materials uh, just to make it look nicer. Uh, so for the materials, I'm just going to go and select one of these, or actually, I'm just going to go and select every other one. So uh, the process is you highlight a segment, hit the tab key to select the whole form, hold the control key so you don't lose the previous ones, and then you just repeat that. Again, this is something that you get a hang of when you were working Revit for a while. This is, you kind of get that mind muscle memory <laughs> and, and you never mess up. Okay, so we've selected every other one. Uh, let's go here to the materials and finishes. Uh, let's search for something, oops, this is too large. Okay, let's go with something uh, yellow. Here we go, parking stripe, let's use that one. There we go, so this one's now yellow. If I go to, okay, we're going to change it to realistic later on. Okay, so now you select the, the ones that you didn't previously. So you go all the way around, making those selections. I mean, it already looks good like this, but let's make it a little bit nicer. Okay, I've selected the top as well. Go to material. Uh, let's try blue. Okay, so we have some blue over here. Um, let's go with this aluminum. Yeah, let's go with that one. Apply. Okay, and now this is blue. So now when you finish that mass and uh, once we're back here in kind of the, the Revit modeling environment, uh, I can go here to the properties and I'm just going to change the view template to, uh, to none. So it allows me to set this to the kind of realistic view. And then it looks like this. And I think it looks really cool. Uh, so there you go. You can play around with different colors. You can play around with different patterns, maybe make it a bit more spirally or have less or more of these segments. But in the end, this is that uh, cool kind of onion dome. I, I really like the way this looks. I think it's quite cool that you can do this in Revit and it's, it's not that complicated. I mean, definitely not easy, but 
not terribly complicated either. So there we go. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you have learned something new, something interesting, and I'll obviously be back with another Balkan Arctic tutorial in a few days. Uh, make sure to check out my courses. The links will be below the, the video. And also for the project files, that's the second link in the description. So you can uh, get this dome as well as that image file and as well as all of my other Revit project files uh, all on my Patreon page. So anyways, thank you for watching uh, and I'll see you soon. Have a nice day.